Tonight is March 5th, and this is a live recording of session 32 of our D&D campaign, Dungeons and Drogons. Last session, the Drogons descended to the second level of Shadowfell Keep and navigated to a chamber with two short passages. Both ended in double doors. They took the left passage and continued to another pair of double doors which had a board nailed across them. On the board was written, closed. Showing the reckless disregard for signage that we've seen has nearly killed the party in the past, the Drogons decided to go through, revealing a T-intersection. They headed west into a chamber with two stone sarcophagi and a single door. Zook swung the door open and the two sarcophagi banged open. Two corpses emerged. In a terrible start to the battle, Windir fumbled. The corpses hurled internal organs at the Drogons. On round two, Wintir was sucked into a gelatinous cube that snuck up on the party. It occupied the entire corridor, blocking off escape. The elf was digested down to 17 hit points and tried to escape from the cube, but Nick rolled a one. The cube advanced and engulfed Sook, digesting him down to 19 hit points. On round four, Wintir was digested down to seven hit points and escaped right before he died. He exited the cube to the north, putting the cube between himself and the party. So Wintir at this point had a clear path to freedom while the party was still trapped. Zook was digested down to nine hit points and failed to escape. On round five, Wintir, instead of fleeing from these people uh, who he has no real association with, valiantly stuck around, fired an arrow that struck the cube with a thunderous clap that moved the gelatinous mass out of the way, freeing the path for the Drogons to escape. Coltane inspired Zook to heal. Zook was digested again down to 18 hit points and again failed to escape. By round 7, all the Drogons other than Zook pulled back into the northern corridor. Then the cube started attacking the corpses, apparently not differentiating between living or dead tissue. Zook was digested down to 8 hit points, and the gnome just managed to escape. The Drogons retreated north, effectively having been saved by Wintir, despite the fact that they murdered his cousin. He doesn't know that. He doesn't know that. Well, we tried telling him, but he doesn't For sure. <laughs> I'm actually kind of excited for the point that we get out of this random dungeon crawling so that I can start uh, elaborating on, on that. What? I want, I want to start beating up Coltane, is what I'm saying. Oh, okay, you can go right ahead. That's alright, Coltane knows he can just blame it all on wreckage anyway. Yep. <laughs> Wreckage when he's in character A or character B? Or character C. Mad. I heard uh, character C was was very nicely played. Similar to character B. And it carried over into a parallel universe? So Dave and John are not here tonight. Who will control their respective characters? Not it. Wreckage. Okay, I'll do Zook. Nick, that's Doug, I would not have it any other way. <laughs> I think it'd be cool if we could actually have wreckage diagnosed with, like, split personalities. Was anyone capable of diagnosing that back then? You know, I bet there's a dwarven blacksmith who could. <laughs> <laughs> actually, I, I think at the time they did have a cure for that. I think it consisted of taking a drill and drilling into the skull to let the demons out. Ah, uh, but... Called a lobotomy. Did, did drills exist at this time? Wouldn't they just take a metal uh, stick? A manual and drill. <laughs> You're not a power I think drill. <laughs> if they have <laughs> a power drill. I don't know what the hell a, <laughs> a manual magic drill, drill is. It's the same, it just you turn a, a little handle. It's like, it just runs off like a few uh, small gears and uses the same kind of bit. Oh, I think I know what you're talking about now. In fact, if you uh, if you watch HBO's Rome, there's a there's a very nice 
I hey. love HBO's room. Oh, no, no, I don't want to learn. No, thank you. <laughs> but uh, HBO, uh, HBO can almost do no wrong. Anyway. Besides, I don't have HBO. Says the guy who was gonna torrent. <laughs> yeah, I don't torrent TV shows. I stream TV shows. I'm too lazy to torrent them. Well, depends. I'm too lazy to torrent certain ones. You're confessing to crime on live radio. Oh, yeah. like it really matters. They'll never find can, me. Can we get back into the game? I guess. <laughs> okay, so you guys just escaped from this uh, almost TPK situation. A what now? Total party kill. It's oh. when the whole party dies. So, uh, is everything dead? What do we have to worry about? That's not true. The whole party would not have died. I can teleport. Is everything dead? You, you guys retreated from the battle. Oh, so the the slimes and everything, they're still kicking around? Yes. Well, Wreckage thinks we should go back to town. Well, Wreckage, as our glorious leader, I suppose we should all follow your lead. Let's go back to town, then. Winter agrees. Winter is running low on arrows and could readily use a resupply of his winter arrow quivers. Alright, so what business are you going to have in the town other than getting arrows? I need to buy daggers, which means I need to deal with that annoying blacksmith. Oh, I hate him. I don't think you've ever talked to him. Yeah, I bought daggers from him before. And I've had oh, yeah. to him yell at wreckage. It's funny. Oh, I find him irritating, wreckage. yet I'm Scottish. You are not Scottish. Technically, I am. Well, you're from Nova Scotia? Uh, Scottish... Scottish descent. Oh, well, that's why I'm Argentinian. <laughs> uh, well, I, I think, think my last technically name, that... Montgomery. It's Scottish. That makes us all African, because the first woman came from Africa, so... And considering we don't even know how life on Earth started, it's possible we're not even from this planet. We might be Martian, okay. yeah. I hate you all. <laughs> yes! <laughs> That's my first milestone for the night. Go okay, ahead. so, um... Winter needs arrows, Autumn needs daggers. Does anyone else have any other business in Winterhaven? Yeah, we could take a Thanks. nap. I, I have a question. Can I just pull out Wreckage's teeth and use them as throwing daggers? I'm not sure he'd agree with that. Wreckage needs his teeth for glorious leadership. We'll give him nice How wooden ones. Like if Wreckage it? ever dies, you can feel free to do whatever you want with the corpse. Oh good. Whatever you, can skin you want. Him and then wear him like a suit. Yes, I know, that's just really disturbing. How come Wreckage's shield is unequipped? Because Sir Keegan, brave brave Sir Keegan destroyed it. Oh god. Oh, Sir Keegan. Wreckage just starts crying for no reason. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. Alright, so I was thinking we can just gloss over this trip to Winterhaven if it's just a resupply. That yeah. we, we don't roleplay, we just. Is everyone cool with I that? I would gladly avoid roleplaying that. Yep. Okay. So what I was going to say is that you can buy things at their standard price, but I know Steven's going to say, well, I don't know what the standard price is, so I'm going to look that up for you. <laughs> Here is the sound yeah, of me know. flipping the pages in my player's handbook. How did you know I was going to say that? Because you always say stuff like that. Yeah, I tend not to remember things. I'd be surprised if you actually remembered how to play this game when we reach the next battle. I remember how to do that. Now, when this campaign ends, if there's a huge gap between this one and me playing another one, I'll forget everything. I guarantee it. Alright, a dagger costs one gold piece. Okay. Does anyone else need to know anything? A quiver of arrows costs one gold piece. And weighs three pounds. Uh, how much does a sunrod cost? If I recall correctly, it was two gold pieces. Let me check. So I can just add um, daggers now. Yeah, two gold pieces. Yes, unless you want to buy a ridiculous amount of daggers. How many do you want to buy? Like, five. Yeah, that's fine. And I'm gonna buy, like, three sun rods. And I'm going to buy four quivers of arrows. Well, let me know when you guys are done adding that to your character sheets and deducting the... monies. Finish. I'm done. Nope. Uh, so do we rest, too? 
was resting uh, on the plan menu? Oh, yeah, you can take an extended rest. Cool, Dane can forget the name of the uh, innkeep again. Ah, I have five, meant for wreckage to buy a shield. Sideways. Can I buy a shield for wreckage? Are we still, uh... Uh, uh yeah. Um, I, I'm guessing Dave would be okay with that. Uh, let's see, he'd probably want a heavy shield. Yeah. So that's 10 gold. And for that he'd have to go to the blacksmith, so he'd be <laughs> getting a metal shield instead of the flimsy wooden one he had. Blacksmith I yells like at him, wreckage picture. is... Yeah, wreckage is unhappy, and we're back. So all on a standard day. Uh, Let's tell no. Dave that, uh... <laughs> I don't know, that, that the blacksmith gave him a real hard time. Really made him look like a fool. Perfect. Maybe we should tell him that it's Zook's fault that he gave him a hard time. That tends to be the case anyways, am I right? Yes. Exactly. So we have our scapegoat. We're good. You adding that shield? Yeah, I'm looking it up right now. In the meanwhile, what are your plans when you return to Shadowfell Keep? Coltane will follow the glorious leader, Wreckage. Unless he tries to lead us to the like slime, I don't like glorious case, leader, it sounds too <laughs> glorified. In which case, he'll direct Wreckage elsewhere. Uh, well, let's see, there's... So, looking at the map, the bad guys are all here, right? You could always just go somewhere else instead of revisiting old failures and failing again. Wreckage wants to revisit old failures and fail again. Or go somewhere new. Wreckage is feeling very undecided right now. How about we go here? Oh, um, yeah, actually that area was all explored. Uh, I've missed out on so much. Wait, which area? Hmm? Oh, it had beds. Wow. So, the, uh, the branch to the left is where the bad guys that will kill us are, right? But there's double doors to the front, which we haven't explored? That's correct. And the other option would be to go upstairs and fight that big slime thing. I guess. Yeah. I'm <laughs> pretty sure I know how Wreckage feels about slimes. Maybe we should check that Wreck door to the south. Then. Wreckage is going to be glorious leader and go somewhere new. And Wreckage goes somewhere new and opens the door. I love how specific that is. Alright. I suppose we'll follow our glorious leader. Yeah, I Coltane suppose so. and Coltane, Zook, follow Wreckage. And uh, Wreckage equips his shield, by the way. Um, uh, these doors are locked, right? I have a question. Those doors are not <laughs> locked. You went Why is there. your shield dwarven skin? Because that's... What What, you even skin the black and put them on your shield? It's a metaphor. I'm too stupid for metaphors. Leave me alone. Um... Okay. Wintier would like to uh, close the doors on the left, on the right, uh, on the left, a little more firmly before going on, but uh, I guess we have to see what, what Wreckage sees first, don't we? Well, right now Wreckage uh, sees very little, because with only one door open, Coltane's light source only pours out a sliver. Wreckage opens the other door. Atta boy. <laughs> Wreckage shows human how door opening is done. You do it like a real pro. Uh, and Wintier says, Hold on a minute, guys. Let me secure our, um, retreat. Flank. Flank? I've got a bad feeling about this room for some reason. Considering we're in a dungeon, I'd have a bad feeling about every room. So, Wintier fumbles off. around in darkness. <laughs> I was about to say, Wintier goes to the doors and sees nothing. Um, so what kind of handles we got here? Could I tie some rope around them or something? Could I... 
pick up a rock and tie a rock around them. Oh yeah, a rock tie a really rock? Good to keep a door shut. But well, what kind of what kind of door handles we got here? Uh, yeah, you, you can like... you can tie a rope around the handles. Okay, I think I've got fifty feet of hempen rope. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you don't need that much. I think uh, a foot. Would that no? Maybe two feet. Is that enough? To secure two feet the door? sounds reasonable. So Winter deftly and bravely cuts two feet of rope from his fifty foot hempen rope and ties the doors closed. Like a boss. Alright, done. Now why can't we do the same thing when wreckage is on one side of the door and we're on the other side? Because that wouldn't be nice. We're not uh, doing... Meanwhile, wreckage shouts, Wreckage can't see! Wreckage can now see! Coltane steps in and out from in front of the doors. Amused at wreckages, vocalizations of everything that happens. <laughs> so having opened these Rick double doors and, the door. <laughs> and Coltane using his light source to illuminate within, the Trogons and Wintier see a 30-foot high room that looks vaguely like a memorial. To the west, uh -oh. a... <laughs> to the west, a 20-foot tall statue of a warrior in plate armor stands atop a raised dais, and holds an outstretched sword. Question, the corners... The dais, but, but Didn't we go through this already? We did go yeah, through this already. Yeah, sound like a broken record there. A dais is a well, raised platform. Not remembering the less important thing. Does, does this statue resemble uh, Wreckage's Man Crush? <laughs> it does not. Okay. Who's Wreckage's Man Crush? Sir Keegan. In the corners of the eastern wall sit two statues of crouching dragons, and to the south, an entryway leads to a set of double doors. You guys haven't seen a ton of those already. In the entryway stand four more statues of small uh, cherubic figures holding vases above their heads. Really? Steven, you're not asking what cherubic means? Sorry, or a vase? Or statue? <laughs> <laughs> what, what was that, Steven? What does it mean? It means they look like cherubs. Like Cupid type figures. Uh, what's what's a vase? My my <laughs> idea of a cherub is that bastardy demon thing from Doom Three, which is not a pleasant thing. Little then demon. I'm glad oh. that we went through this rather than letting you assume it was that. <laughs> CJ, why are there things from Doom Three in here? It doesn't make sense. <laughs> <laughs> Another question. Wait, wait, no, wait. I was thinking of Chinese dragons, never mind. I was gonna say how the hell are they crouching? Thinking of the wrong dragon. That's why. CJ, how does a room have 30 feet? <laughs> What's a room? Coltane prods wreckage and says, Go on in and explore, glorious leader. I'll be right behind you. <laughs> wreckage is going to be glorious. Shows you how to strut into room. And wreckage gl gloriously struts into the room. What makes it so glorious? The fact that Wreckage is doing it. Coltane, um, struts boringly. No, he doesn't even strut, he just enters the room after Wreckage. Yeah, let's hold up there. Adam does the same. Oh. I'm Christ. scared. I knew it! As, as Wreckage approaches the 20 foot tall statue of the warrior in plate armor, the doors to the north crash shut, followed by the sound of a large heavy bolts sliding into place. Oh no! <laughs> oh, not my problem anymore. Wreckage can't see anymore! Wreckage doesn't feel so glorious. <laughs> uh, I recommend see, a swift retreat. a sunrod? Wreckage has one sunrod. As soon as the doors crash shut, this massive statue in front of wreckage suddenly swings its weapon in a deadly arc. The statue is apparently articulated. Wreckage is struck for 9 damage and knocked prone. Roll initiative. Just him or all of us? Everyone. Don't we get like a plus something bonus? 
Everyone except Wreckage gets a plus two from me. Actually, he might get it as well. Have to double check. <laughs> oh, really? Eight. That's not cool. Uh, Wreckage rolls a nine. Winter rolls a twenty-seven. I'll let him get an eight. Yeah, since Wreckage can't see Coltane, he does not get the bonus. Coltane gets a total of twenty-two, and Zook gets a total of fourteen. Well, it makes sense. John's not here, so somebody's got to get the bad rolls. So Wintier is first to react. Uh, Wintier readies an attack, but doesn't know what else to do. I can do that, right? Like a, a twin arrow strike? What is the trigger condition? Uh, if he sees an enemy. Alright. Coltane. Coltane cries out, Don't worry, glorious leader, we're coming for you! And he attempts to break the door with his short sword. Aha! A fantastic roll against an inanimate object. A total of 25 and 9 damage. Alright, so again, these doors are metal doors. These are no uh, flimsy wooden doors. They're metal. Yes, I recall stating that all doors, unless otherwise specified... Uh, sorry, they're made of wood, but with banded bronze. So... What, what kind of band? Is it like a, like a punk band? A cover band? Definitely cover. Um, I need to describe what the door looks like, because I have no idea what the hell that means. CJ, what's a door? No, I just don't understand what a door with banded bronze looks like. It's got bands of bronze on it. Like... Running across. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna give you a picture right now. Yeah, that would help. I've never been good at visualizing things. Oh yeah, that would be a hard door to break down. Yeah, so Coltane strikes the door, dealing uh, little damage to its structural integrity. Maybe you should target the hinges. Zook is up. Um Zook approaches the door and examines it looking for any sign of I don't know, like a, a, a crack or something, to see if he can see the bolt that he heard, or if there's some way of unlocking it from the Zook end. finds a lock. Alright. He says, Look here, Autumn, there's a lock. Why don't you try picking that lock? And then steps out of the way. Wreckage hears the statue whirl again and crash that stone sword into him for 14 damage. Even while he's prone? Especially while he's prone. He's got good aim. It swings low. I guess statues are eating their carrots. Wreckage is down to 29 hit points. And Wreckage is up in the dark. Um, is Wreckage able to head towards the sound of the door that got thwacked? He can. So Wreckage, using his glorious leadership intuition, locks his ears onto the sound of the other leader and heads towards him. And when he feels the door... Ah, uh, he was prone, so he crawled over. Which is fine. Is there a movement bonus on that? Uh, not bonus. Penalty? Yes, half speed. But he doesn't quite make it, because he forgot to get up. Got two moves. Surely he could get there with half speed. And then he takes a deep breath. Uh, what kind of action is standing up? Uh, it's either a move or a minor. Might be a move. Well, he wouldn't be able to attack it anyway if he, if he moved. So stand up he, as a move action, yeah. Yeah, so he doesn't need to get right next to it. So he stands up in the darkness, bravely, defiantly, staring down the flooding abyss of blackness. Autumn. Autumn moves up to the door and then attempts to pick it. Pick the lock up. Don't forget, don't forget the uh, negative one for res sickness. Right, it would be a 21. In total. Autumn tries to pick the lock, but fails. Damn it. Stupid lock. 
kind of action does that count as? Standard. Um, probably a standard. Yeah, I would assume so. Ah, I'll have to try again next time. Winter, round two. After feeling a bit like an idiot when expecting enemies that weren't there, uh, Winter tries his own hand at picking the lock. Uh, can he stand on top of Coltane while he does it? He can, but if any enemies come around and attack you, you'll have terrible, terrible penalties to your armor class. <laughs> but we'll have bromance going on, which is a bonus. To bravery and courage. I make a thievery check and get an 8! Wintir fumbles around, looking the fool in front of Autumn. Is that a 1? It was a 3. Ah, okay. Ugh, I'm supposed to be the thunder thief. Not over, I'm crying. <laughs> Coltane. Coltane, realizing that bromance isn't working out for Winter, decides to step back and let the two people with lockpicks do their thing to the door. You don't want to hit it again? You can, you can hit it one more time. You can hit it from behind you. One more time. He does not attack the door. Yeah, because he has a sword and shield out anyway. Zook. Zook looks around in his backpack in case he just happens to have lockpicks. But he doesn't. So he steps behind Winter and does nothing. Wreckage. Wreckage listens to the tinkly tinkly sounds of failed lockpicking. And decides Just to kick the door way. open! Uh, yeah. He decides to kick the door open. Even though he has a sword. Battle axe. Even though he has a sharp pointy thing-ish, he decides to kick at the door. Because it's safer than swinging around sharp objects when you can't see. Pay attention, children. Roll a strength check. With with his 20 strength, Wreckage rolls a 4 plus 6, getting a 10. Wreckage kicks the door, and on the other side of the door, <laughs> Winter, Winter's lockpicking tools come flying out of the lock and onto the floor. He's going to have to spend an action picking those up. <laughs> Why would he leave his lockpicking tools in the door? I don't understand. Because he rolled a three. Yep. Yeah. Doesn't he take them out after failing? Doesn't he, he try and no, then cause... take them out and sigh? Each round counts as how long in real time? Six seconds. Yeah. You wouldn't, you know, pull them out after six seconds. You'd do multiple attempts. Well, that's then, in that case, Therefore, I was they would still using be the lockpicks lock that Autumn would have left in there. Two doors. Okay, so Autumn's lockpicks. Yeah, but this one lock. So Autumn's lockpicking tools fall to the floor. Oh, thank you. <laughs> this is only like a minor action to pick it up anyway. Yes, just like it would be a minor action to pull out your own lock and pick, lock, bleh, lock picking tools, so it really doesn't make a difference. It makes Autumn. a difference. Okay, now I'm going to pick up my goddamn lockpicking tools because of a certain someone. So, now, now hold on, all you've seen is you've, you've tried to pick this lock and all of a sudden something's banging on the door, threatening to break your lock picking tools and smash a door open on your face, and you've heard nothing of, of anyone saying anything from the other side. Ah, oh, they have faith in the glorious leader. <laughs> I'm sure it's just wreckage, not some monster trying to kill us. <laughs> yeah, and if it is, we can kill it first. There's four of there us. There was a... There was a wreckage's grunt when he when he kicked the door and stubbed his toe. <laughs> Besides, if something walks through the door when we open it, we just beat it. Well, considering every other time we've gotten through some kind of barred door, we've been trounced. It's not looking good. So should by we a single creature as well. <laughs> door or leave it. We need to rescue our friend. Scapegoat. Okay. If there's some horrible monster on the other side of this door, I say we throw Zook at it. We need to save our friend, says Coltane, safely ten feet away from the door. <laughs> yeah. Alright, I'm gonna try to pick the door again. Stupid door. 
Aha, there we go. Now I can apply the... Oh, that's just lame. A 14. That is not cool. Autumn picks up her lockpicking tools, shoves them back in, but fails. FML. Right now. Round three, Wintier. Uh... Wintier uses his own tools to try and pick the lock? Well, hold on. Autumn's tools are still in there. Is he gonna <laughs> yank hers out? How many actions would this take to take hers out and use his own if he, like, just throws them in her face? <laughs> minor action to, t to throw hers out, minor action to take his out. And then you still got your standard to actually try. Okay, yeah, so Winter says, Your tools are unlucky, Aladrin. Throws hers in her face, and takes his out, and tries to pick the lock on the door with his own tools. You better sleep with one eye open next time. That's all I'm gonna say. And he rolls a 21, which, as we know already, is probably not enough. That's correct. Or maybe I was wrong, says Winter. <laughs> Coltane. Coltane surveys the incompetence of his comrades, looks at Zook and says, 20 silver, that uh, Winter gets it open before she does. Bite me. That's it. Zook. Zook look, looks up at Coltane. Deal, human. I bet she'll do it first. Wreckage. Wreckage puts his money on the elf. <laughs> we hear this through the door. Is the door too thick to hear to hear the bets that were going on? Yeah. If they were speaking <laughs> loud, he might be able to hear, but not at that volume. He uh, heard their, he heard talking. He doesn't know what they said though. Wreckage shouts. Help, wreckage! Glorious companions. <laughs> wreckage is afraid of the dark. <laughs> and then he he kicks at the door again. <laughs> 